Welcome back to Pack Mentality. I'm Matt Banwart. My wife, Caitlin, and I own Red Wolf CrossFit in Huntington Beach, California. And we start this podcast with one goal in mind, and that was to make fitness education accessible, engaging, and effective for everyone. Today, we have a special guest, Sharon, on the podcast. She's going to tell us all about her fitness journey. She's dealt with a lot over the years, has been a member of Red Wolf for, what, seven years now? Five. Five? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was been longer. It does feel, <laughs> I feel like I've been around for a while. You know, we've started at the old place, now over here, okay. so it's been five. It's been five. Okay, got it. Um, great. So let's dive right in, shall we? Right on. All right. So today, Sharon and I are talking about kind of what got her fitness journey started in the first place. Um, we're also going to be going over, um, she's dealt with some injuries in the past and how she kind of overcame that. Um, and uh, I love your tenacity, especially with dealing with some of the injuries you've dealt with. So we'll dive Thank into you. that, especially. But let's start from the beginning, yeah. shall we? Okay. All right. Good <laughs> to have you. Uh, so what motivated you to start with Red Wolf in the first place? Yeah, I was uh, at a different CrossFit gym. Been there for two years. <clears throat> they totally changed the program, dropped their affiliate with CrossFit, mm -hmm. and they went into completely different programming, which I think kind of threw everything into a tailspin for me because there was no consistency. My workouts weren't as consistent or as intense as they had been. I um, never knew what to expect from the programming. And because they weren't open on Sundays, and I would come in and do kind of an open gym on a Sunday, that it just felt a little chaotic and then throw that into, I traveled for a living. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wasn't getting what I wanted to out of my workouts. So a friend of mine who was at the same gym said, I'm gonna go check out Cross, CrossFit Red Wolf. And I'm like, mm -hmm. "Where you know, is that the one over at Cal 30? He goes, yeah, so it's really right down the street. We went in on a Sunday and um, it's like, wow. The, you know, the, the coach she was on at the time was really attentive. attentive. Mm -hmm. uh, the programming seemed very solid, very solid CrossFit programming, but I, I love the attention level that each of the members in the class were getting. And that kind of did it for me. Okay. I mean, and from there on, and I, I think I signed up like a week later. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. That, that was easy. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> uh, what were some things that you know, that you, that you get here that you weren't getting there specifically? Yeah, specifically, it goes, you know, I definitely the, 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 the tension in the class to form, um, which was really, really important because I had established a lot of bad habits in my prior gyms. Okay. Got it. Um, and I didn't know how bad they were until I got to Red Wolf because it didn't matter who was coaching at the time, it would be like, okay, shoulders back, elbows up, you know, and just doing a lot of cues. And I was like, wow, I, I really was just not doing this the right way and getting okay. the most out of it that I possibly so could. So pretty much you weren't getting coached. I wasn't getting coached. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut so, to the chase. So, so, yeah, so, so you, you you came to Red Wolf and then you were like, oh, I'm, I'm actually being corrected. And then we're actually, the coaches are actually doing their job. Well, well I, I think I didn't know how good it was because I didn't know how what I wasn't getting at the other gym because that was my first foray into CrossFit I had done other yeah. things previously uh -huh. and I was like okay I guess this is the way it's supposed to be mm -hmm. and then so there were some classes where there was no coach because first you know personal reason somebody couldn't attend to so we would just kind of do our own thing really yeah I know it sounds kind of crazy <laughs> that is insane and you paid for this I <laughs> I think that's why I'm selling looking for alternatives. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. And this is this is actually one, and I'd hate to say it, but this is ex this is common practice yeah. at other CrossFit gyms, not just the one you were at. But right. I see this all the time, and this is specifically why I don't I don't drop into gyms. Yeah. I don't even bother because I'm like, I'm not going to pay money to do something that's going to be worse at my own gym when I can go do my programming at well, <laughs> another it, exactly. at like somewhere else. Well, and, when and I travel, and it wasn't as. It, it wasn't that way to start with, but that's the way it ended up with because mm -hmm. circumstances about the owners, you know, kind of faded out and okay. turned over hands and then it just kind of came unwrapped. Just kind of deteriorated. Yeah. 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 That's so sad. <laughs> I, I need him. I, it, there's just so many stories I hear from other people like that. Yeah. You know, I, I even still have people who, I mean, I know you joined five, over five years ago, yeah. but you know, I hear the same story from other people when they come from other gyms and they have all these, uh, they have all these kind of horror stories, not, not necessarily super bad, but like they weren't getting enough attention. The The coaches only coach certain people. Um, they were super nice at first, but then over time that 
that uh, they just kind of became a number to them. And like this, this is very common that I hear all the time. And I actually have other CrossFitters who will join and they'll be kind of even reluctant to like, to like <laughs> even get back into CrossFit because of the experiences they've had before. Yeah. And so um, uh, this is why I, we do work so hard at the gym to try and give people a much better experience. And, you know, I hope we're accomplishing that. Um, all right, uh, let's dig into um, the next question, shall sure. we? And that was good. So we kind of got a background on there. So I know you have a very demanding job. You travel a lot. You mentioned that earlier. So how do you balance your fitness routine with your work schedule? I have to schedule for it. Be sh- you know, if I don't schedule it in advance, uh, every week on a Sunday, I send Caitlin an email. So here's because I have individual programming as well as every once in a while I'll do classes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but if I don't tell her like, okay, this Tuesday is a travel day. I'm off two, two days in a hotel. Here's where I'm going to be back in the gym. Uh, I plan that not only with her so she knows how to program for me, mm-hmm. but how I, what, what my mental, uh, I say my mental state has to be on each of those days. So yeah. when do I have to wake up? When do I have to be prepared? And, <clears throat> and schedule it every single day. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's why I can be successful when I do, because if I just kind of woke up and showed up, uh, and I just I wouldn't be able to get in what I need to that day as well right. as, as well attend to my work and family when I'm in town. And uh, it just becomes way too compact. And I, something's got to give, so I have to plan it. Yeah. No, so, so planning ahead is a huge thing for you and, and yeah. making sure that your schedule is aligned. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. That makes sense. Um, is that something that you are always good at doing or is this something you kind of learned as you, as you kind of progress in your career? I've always had fairly demanding jobs and have been traveling since probably 2007 for my job. Oh, wow. Yeah. So for me, it's always been something that I planned into my life so that I could get done what I needed to get done and take care of my fitness, take care of my health. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't be able to, something has to give if you don't plan it. Oh, okay, yeah, 100%. No, I, I agree with you. Now that I've gotten older, it's like, yeah, I have to be much better for sure at planning. Uh, uh, tell us about like, what you've done for work over the last 10 years or so. Yeah, uh, for work? Yeah, oh, tell, okay. tell us a bit about your background yeah. for work. Yeah, uh, I've, uh, you know, I've worked in retail my entire career and, okay. most, and for field leadership, for the past um, 20, almost 25 years, and, and well, I'm actually along in the 30 years in a field leadership role at the regional level since 2007. So at, at some points I've had half the country in this current role. Um, I, I actually cover the entire country wow. for, yeah, for Pete's Coffee. That is uh, awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, you know it it's wonderful because you it get to experience um, other parts of the country. I mean, mm-hmm. and and, uh, and it's interesting, it's fun, but it also can be exhausting, and yeah. you have to take care of yourself. And I think that for me, why fitness is so important, I've I've always had fitness to one degree or another, whether it's been triathlon, short course, or it's been boot camp, or it's been on my own. I've always had something um, that I can rely upon to get me past, keep me in in shape for a rigorous work schedule, a travel schedule, uh, because it, you go south pretty fast sitting on planes and sitting in cars for hours upon end, then you stand up and you feel like you got hit by a bus. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, so let's dive more into that. Yeah. So what uh, what, so what do you specifically, like, tell us about what your day-to-day looks like and what do you specifically do for Pete's and, and yeah. all that? Well, I specifically, I, I oversee their field leadership. I, I have seven district managers who report to me across the country in okay. Southern California. So um, um, if, I'm, if I'm local, I'm, I'm getting in a car and driving to markets and, and spending time with my district leaders and the store manager management team, making sure that we're operating correctly, making sure we're, you know, customer service forward as well as producing great coffee drinks, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that high, high quality. Uh, so there's demand for that. And because we are a food service industry that we have a lot of food service types of uh, things that we have to make sure hygiene and and quality and where we get tested by uh, uh, the, food, you know, the food and beverage department. So <clears throat> there's always something to look at, but mostly it's around people because it's a word people business. So it's, it's motivating and supervising and leading individuals to achieve what our goals are for as an organization. Okay, that's awesome. So you're in a leadership role. Yeah. You're 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 managing people. You're I mean you're you're pretty high up then, obviously. <laughs> and, um, 
that that's good. Uh, so uh, tell us more about like some lessons you've learned over you know over all these years of being you know in that position, and you know give give everyone some advice on leadership. Wow. Okay. So I think the, the, from a leadership capacity, is it that you can't carry people across the finish line? I always tell this all the time, how, how, how far do you want to carry your team or do you want to ha help your team grow enough as, a, as their leadership skills to get them to be where they need to be to be successful? Mm -hmm. um, because they have to want it more than you or at least as much as you do. And usually more because if, if they can't be self-motivating, you're not going to get them there. Yeah. And they have to work hard, if not harder than you at this. They have to... Um, work on their personal skills. They have to be able to, um, I'd say probably when you leave them a plan or you're working on a plan together, they they have to have that a level of ownership in it mm -hmm. or skin in the game to want to succeed because nothing that I can do or you can do are going to get them there. They have to help get themselves there. Yeah. So so basically they have to be proactive in their approach. Yeah. They can't be passive in this at all. No, they're, they're, you can't be passive. At, 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 well, you yeah, it starts with hiring the right people, but if, you know, and, and you can't you can't motivate somebody to succeed without them being part of the game. Mm -hmm. They have to want it. They have to want to work for it and have the same, um, want to accomplish the same goals that you're looking to achieve. Okay, got it. No, that makes perfect sense. Um, and, you know, let's kind of bring this back to fitness. Like, sure. it will, will, like so you being up there a high level in, in Pete's and, and being in a leadership role, what is some things that you all see that directly correlates to fitness in terms of people actually achieving those goals and being proactive in, in that? Sure. Um, you know, or you can even talk about how it applies to you directly yeah, and how yeah. you approach your fitness. Sure. Uh, look, knowing that every day when you work with people, there's going to be crazy stuff that happens. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, um, whether there's um, drama, whether it's a difficult thing you have to accomplish in the organizational goals, um, things pop up with during the day or over the course of a week that are really hard. Mm -hmm. And that, that doesn't mean you shy away from them. Um, I think just, you know, when you look at fitness and you're working, looking at a workout and intensity, and and you want to say, oh God, this is this is going to be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> or during the middle of the workout, you you know you want to stop, but you don't because when you when you go that extra mile and you accomplish something that was incredibly difficult, there's a sense of accomplishment. There's a sense of motivation to do to do it the next time, and to know that I can do difficult things. Mm -hmm. um, and just because you come upon difficult things at work, um, there's no need to step back and say, you know, this is going to really be bad and sucky. So like, let's kind of step back from it. You know, we push through, we push through obstacles every single day to success. Um, and I think that when you do CrossFit, uh, it's, it's definitely the same thing. You push through obstacles during a wad that's really difficult and get to the end of that. And there's a set, there's an accomplishment of, we can do that again tomorrow. That's awesome. And would you say that, you know, this CrossFit style or this intensity of, of training that you do, helps you in that position that you have. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. Because again, it builds your confidence to come upon obstacles every single day and push through them and to push through them to success and knowing that some days are gonna be better than others, uh, but you just keep moving forward and uh, letting your team know that your confidence in them and yourself will help them get to their, their our business goals as a team. Oh, that's awesome, fantastic. and. Another follow-up question to that is, do you see a direct correlation between people who are successful and that they actually do pay attention to their health and fitness? Or is or is that something you even notice? You know, I think that when I see others, especially, you know, whether it be my peer group or when I go to the home office and spend time with, you know, the, the people who are, uh, do fit levels of fitness, whether it's CrossFit, we'll get in conversations. Oh, I've done CrossFit before, or, mm -hmm. or I do marathons or whatever it may be. You can tell there's a sense of, of um, planning. Number one, we all have to plan this into our lives. It's not, doesn't come up uh, just randomly like, okay, I'll, I'll go out this morning and run 10 miles, but I only have 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, or I have to go to an hour class and, and I really only have, um, you know, 45 minutes. So you're planning that in. <clears throat> it helps you plan your days with work and see forward to directionally, whether it is, it's, yeah, I have to see a week out, sometimes two weeks out to know how I'm going to fit things in, as yeah. well as my, you know, what my business plan is going to be for the next couple of weeks and what my, <laughs> 
travel plans look like and what do I want to accomplish? And the same thing I come upon with some of my peers or people in the office to say, I do exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're tenacious. They get things done. They're fun to talk to because they had, they share a common vision, mm -hmm. um, organization as well as health wise. Like, you know, I had this one, one gentleman who I work with in facilities. He's like on, he sent me a picture of one of his, uh, protein bars that he had tried to because I we, mm -hmm. we played swap the protein bars but nice. it's time to work <laughs> I said dude if you're missing a meal this one's great and mm -hmm. last thing the next thing next time I came to the office he gave me one mm -hmm. um so you know that it's something that people are, who are thinking about what next looks like they don't miss a meal or they're not missing a workout or they're getting the most out of what they do every single day yeah that's awesome so everybody listening as you hear that that they're High achievers work out. <laughs> I think so. In, in a nutshell. <laughs> and also that, you know, we're all pressed for time. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you do is that we're all struggling with time and the best way to do it. And we know we've repeated this before. And then um, Sharon's not the only person to say this on the podcast, but plan ahead, fit into your schedule. And I mean, obviously it's important to you. Oh, for as sure. Well. I mean, on a scale of one to 10, how important is fitness to you? It's a 10. Uh, I can tell because you are here a lot. <laughs> I always see you. When you're not traveling, you're at the gym. Yeah. No, I, it, it, you'd be surprised how much you can fit into a schedule. You know, I have a family. I have a wife and two kids. Yep. And I, I, I'm at work. I'm traveling. I have home office time. And I'm at the gym six days a week. So it's figuring make out it what work. those slices yeah. of time are, whether it's get up at, you know, 530 to get to the gym by seven for her open gym. When, yep. I'm there, yep. you know, um, and I think that that's it, w to the level you can prioritize whatever you want to do with your time. If it's important to you, you're going to fit it in. Exactly. So no more. I don't want to hear any more excuses from all of you <laughs> who are listening to this that you don't have time. <laughs> well, and you know, look, at, at the end of the day, like, you know, we all have moments where we get up and, and go like, oh, man, I do not want to go. Today, I had that today. <laughs> I had that today. I did not want to do this triathlon that we yeah. had. And I was like, of all the things, of all the workouts I don't want to do, I don't want to do this one. And I wasn't even, even yesterday, I told people, I'm not, I'm not doing it. And then, of course, I got suckered in. <laughs> and, I, and I figure out a way to get it in. <laughs> it well, was I think, fun. I think you threw a barbell in there just to get everybody into the, <laughs> <laughs> the deadlift, just to get, make sure people came. No comment. <laughs> we're, we're, just, we're not just going to run Yeah, here. we're not just going to run. <laughs> um, no, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Well, uh, and I think that any time that, you know, the, cro the, the hackneyed saying of CrossFit means you anywhere you are today uh, is so true. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you can come in and say, looking at the workout and going, oh man, I just do not want to do that particular move. Or I can, I, the RX is 35 pound dumbbell and I, I think I can only do 25, I'll do 25. Yeah. I pull a 25 and a 35 and sometimes I surprise myself. I'll be like, oh no, okay, it's, it's a better day than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Cast the, the lighter one aside and just grab the heavier one. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, but just move this, you know, just get in there and move and do something. Um, even if it's not to your expectation, by the time I leave, I feel so much better. No, a hundred percent. Hundred percent. There's so many days, especially recently, where I've been like, I really don't want to do this. I'm tired. I have so much work to do. I'm hungry. Um, I've, I, you know, I just like, you know, you know, like when the list is in your head and you have all these things in over your head, you're like, well, I gotta do this stuff. But you're like, no. And then I force myself to work out. And then guess what? I'm, you know, even I sacrificed that hour where I could have done a lot of work and been productive. I'm ten times more productive afterwards. Exactly. And, and so it doesn't even matter. Like yeah. I make up for it anyways. And and also I'm a lot happier and nicer to be around. <laughs> and, and more, oh, there's that. <laughs> Uh, not, as, not as not as angry as <laughs> long as a meeting <laughs> yeah for sure much more focused for the rest of the day after i work yeah. out this is to get the blood flow to the brain yeah um kind of coming back to the time component what's some advice that you would give to people who do make that excuse that like oh i just don't have time sharon to work out what would you tell them i think i would ask, i would ask them how how important is working out is it is your health important where do you place that priority because if you if you find something important, you're going to make time for it. Yes, 100%. rather than rather than making excuses for it. Yeah, um, you know. And if they were, you know, if they were somebody who was in my sphere of employment, you know, I would ask them what 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 they're most, you know, what do they value? What are the top three things they value, and how do they make time for those mm -hmm. things? And where would they where do they fit fitness and health into that equation? Um, and if they, and if it's just as high up then I would challenge them to go back in and look at their schedule and say, how would you fit it in? Yeah, no, 100%. I remember one time, I think I was, 
um, whining to Caitlin about how I didn't have time to like work out today. And she goes, look, look, she's like, give me your phone, give me your phone. And she looked down the settings of it and was like, Hey, you, you spend an average of two hours, two and a half hours a day on Instagram. So I just found you time to work out. That's more than enough time to work out. I'm like, she said the media shamed you. I know. <laughs> I'm like, well, how do I have time to make stuff like this? Um, <laughs> no, that's awesome. Um, okay. Uh, fantastic. So, you know, with CrossFit, we do talk a lot about community a lot. So, you know, how does, you know, specifically the Red Wolf community kind of support you and help you maintain your fitness over the last five years? Well, well, starting with you and Caitlin, um, I, like I said, I do the individual programming as well as hop into classes just because my schedule is so erratic and not even erratic. It's my schedule is, is just full. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I don't always get to a class because of my schedule. So mm -hmm. um, I, I'll come into uh, open gym and have a full level of workout that will often mimic what the water of the day is mm -hmm. um, as well as accessory work. So from a support standpoint, you know, you and Caitlin have supported me in what I personally need for my, <clears throat> for my fitness level. Uh, and that's not something that a lot of gyms will do for you, uh, even if you're, you know, paying for it or not, I mean, which I do. Um, but the, the intention behind this, the, what I get from <clears throat> the programming is awesome. Like whether it's I'm competing in a, in a, you know, in a competition or just have certain goals in mind, my programming from you guys is spot on as well as fully intentional where I want to get to. So from that, then support from you guys is amazing. Uh, what I get from the community is, you know, I, I think that when you come into the gym and you feel the vibe and you feel the energy and you're talking to the members who I don't always see every day because mm -hmm. I'm in different times of the day. Um, but I see everybody, the same, typically the same people on the weekends, which is great. It's it's a lot of excitement. And when I do get the chance, if it's programmed in, I do a, I do one of the classes. It's like killer. Yeah, uh, it really is. Like it's, today. <laughs> it's, it's today. It's like you know, uh, I, I'm pretty competitive, and I but I usually compete against myself often, and be able to you know benchmark off of others in the class and really be pushed by some of the other class members. Mm -hmm is really a lot of fun yeah. and you just get the best out of yourself. So it's, it's a great supportive community in that everybody, you know, when I, when I had shoulder surgery, everybody was so, um, so positive and uplifting. And I would come in there with, in a sling working out and they're mm -hmm. like, you know, Hey, you know, way to go. Yeah. Great to see you here and uh, get better, you know, get well soon. And it was really uplifting for me. Yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for the compliment. And you know, the community is very supportive and that's one thing that we, we emphasize here is, you know, we lead with positivity and making sure that, you know, everyone you know, gets their goals and are individuals within a collective group setting. So that way everyone gets exactly what they need. Um, and they also get that, uh, the motivation from that as well. Cause sometimes, you know, you, you, I mean, you know, the, you know, the environment can really shape, can really make or break how motivated you really are to mm -hmm. actually perform the ex exercise in the first place. Oh, absolutely. Um, kind of digging into that, you brought up the injury. So it's something I want to talk about. So, uh, walk us through that. So tell us how it happened, you know, what, you know, what, what, what's going on since then and because i mean yeah. a lot of people will get like even something minor way less than yours and they'll just quit for until it's better yeah. and then they'll work out again but you've worked through it so kind of start us from the beginning on that yeah about probably about five years ago right before right before i joined red wolf <clears throat> i was doing some triathlon sprint uh, distance and was on a bike ride on pch and slipped and hit a, pa a patch of sand and went down and just jammed my arm oh. uh, to my shoulder and I felt something funny go on. I was like, yeah. oh, that, that feels terrible. Yeah. And just, you know, got back on the bike and kept cycling. And whether, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't know it at the time, but I had, you know, torn my biceps tendon as well as my oh, rotator cuff man. and kind of limped with it for a good while. And eventually, you know, it kind of, it, it, it healed, but, you know, it didn't heal the right way, of course, right. you know, it was, so I was always kind of a little limited and you know, the terrible thing was that I probably should have gone to the doctor at the time, and, <laughs> but I didn't. Um, and just kind of worked through it. Years later, it just kind of shredded and shredded and shredded. And, time. and then I said, it was it was fine until it wasn't fine. And mm -hmm. then I went in and had it looked at and MRI'd and said, well, you got all this damage and it needs really needs surgical repair. I was like, oh, okay. Man. Scheduled it for February, went in and uh, had to... to um, I had my biceps tendon reattached and uh, two rotator cuff tendons, uh, tears and reattachments and some anchors and stuff like that in there. 
So um, I figured, you know what, I can, I still have two good legs. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, and one you do. Good arm. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I threw Caitlin a text and said, look, uh, I don't know what I can do. Um, but I guess there's things that, you know, I can't, I can't really grab a, you know, I can't do a back squat because I can't grab onto the bar in the back. Mm. But, you know, she's like, well, we have sleds. I said, no. Yes, we do. We have sleds. <laughs> and their sleds became my friend. But, you know, the week, a week after surgery, when I was, uh, you know, we, we, you know, I say we, I had some, some, some pain medication. So I weaned myself off of that. I was just like, done. And I uh, thought the best thing to do was just move, right? You know, just get the blood moving, get the body moving because, yeah, I don't like sitting down so much. Yeah. Um, and uh, so after a week, I said, I'll, I'll see you on Monday, Caitlin. <laughs> I was like, you know, I don't know what I can do, but just program whatever, and I will give it a try. Yeah. And just, um, you know, I think the first day was just a sled pull. I think I had 25 pounds on it. Okay. <laughs> and uh, was just, and I could still do th you know, stuff with my left arm. I just had to be very careful because I couldn't yeah. brace. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just did a lot of reps, lighter weights, and uh, biked. Um, did, you know, I was on the echo bike with one arm. I was on the... Uh, mm -hmm. rowing machine with one arm and um, everything I just did one armed and uh, you know still was in a sling for six weeks wow uh, so I was and you still at, worked out through it yeah no, that's every, fantastic every I was still working out uh, well she programmed for me five days I was like I'm still going six days mm -hmm. uh, so I, I still came in for six days and it would alternate you know what I could accomplish that day but I always try to accomplish as much as I possibly could and work as hard as I could with what I had yeah and every week got better and uh, when I would go to the doctor, or I started going to physical therapy after, I think it was uh, three weeks, and um, you know, I was repairing pretty quick. And uh, you know, I, I attribute it to just getting back in and doing things and yeah. moving, getting the blood pumping, get the blood moving, get the right, keep the rest of my body, you know, in good health. Because I right. think that you can, ca you know, you just cash in and sit back and say, "Well, I'll wait for this thing to be." over but it had a very long road ahead of me right so uh, like i said i was in a sling for six weeks i couldn't i was not going to not work out um and i thought you know i got if i can i took care of my body previously i have to take care of it now let's eat right you know i just made sure i had all the right um foods i just kicked back a little bit on some of the carbs because you know i just wasn't expending as many calories i just couldn't you know with my whole body uh, so I try to be very savvy on the nutri nutritional side as well as working out as hard as I could every single time I was in the gym. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, we just got there, right? It's just, it's just week by week, things improved. And um, I'm still not there yet. I still have, so range of motion is probably at 90%. Okay. Um, but like, you know, I'm starting to do some moves with the right arm that I'm permitted to do by the doctor and physical therapist. But I think that, you know, when, when I look at, I, I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah. Um, it's better than it was before it was sur surgically repaired. And I knew it was going to be a wrong road. And I think you have to just be patient with yourself. And when I come into the gym, it's like, you know, I'm, it's me against me. I'm just competing against me today. Can I do better than I did yesterday? Can I did mo do more than I did yesterday? And if I can't, let's at least do as much. Yeah, 100%. Uh, was there ever a time, especially at the beginning, did you ever have any instance where you kind of struggle with motivation to get into the gym? Or was it like, you were just like, let's go, let's get in there. You mean from uh, post-surgery? Yeah, post-surgery. Uh, yeah, yeah. Really? Because, so, okay. you know, sleep didn't come very good and yeah, it's hard to wake sense. up tired um, and and get in. So I was just like, you know, this kind of this kind of sucks. I don't feel great. Uh, my arm hurts. I didn't sleep well. Why would I want to go into the gym and do more? Yeah, um, especially when you can't do is like do a full on workout right away yeah, right yeah exactly i mean there wasn't a lot of a lot of things that i could do there wasn't a lot so um it, you know was it wasn't as exciting <laughs> as some of the moves you know was i couldn't do power cleans i couldn't do a lot of, i couldn't do any of the olympic moves because i couldn't grab a bar mm -hmm. um and those are the that's some of the fun stuff right but you know it, it's not always going to be fun um i think i have to find the fun in it at the moment um because you know, I was just happy I was moving and I was happy I was moving in the right direction with my arm and my shoulder getting better. And I knew at the end of that, I would, I'd be much better off and I would be able to go back into doing CrossFit and get back on the bar, doing toes to bars. But I said to Caitlin, I, you know, just give me stuff that will do everything that I could do, but I'm not hanging off a bar. Mm -hmm. So all the hollow, hollow moves, hollow body stuff, all the, you know, the core things. So 
I'm actually a lot stronger after five months of doing what I have been doing than the previous five months of that, like head to toe, mm -hmm. which is really kind of bizarre. Yeah. I would have not seen that common. No, 100%. And you definitely suck with it. And um, I would have never guessed that you struggle with motivation, which is funny. <laughs> um, so what, what, what kind of walk us through is going through your head when you were struggling with motivation? <laughs> well, what goes through is just, again, you're tired. Um, yeah, I could be doing other things. I could be sleeping in more than anything. Maybe mm -hmm. I can catch up on my sleep on it because I feel like, you know, like a, a flaming garbage dumpster going down the street. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good one. I want to write that one down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I also, you know, it's one of those things where you do it once, you're like, on, oh, I feel so much better. Okay. Wake up the next day, on, okay. I felt better yesterday. Let's do that again today. Right. And especially at the speed of which I was recovering, I could see how fast my, my arm felt, my shoulder felt, my biceps felt. Everything felt better from day to day. Knowing when I got into the gym and worked, I felt better. My, and, and, and my mood was better. Mm -hmm. Right. Because, you know, I was hopefully getting some, a little bit of serotonin out of the deal. Um, I did a lot, you know, much more intensive, like, you know, you know, a 20 minute AMRAP of, of something or an EMOM. And I was just like, it, it was accomplishing. I, I was able to accomplish something that day that I didn't think I could always do in, in that moment. So it was exciting and I felt better. So when I wake up, wake up feeling like that flaming dumpster, I was just like, okay, when you get out of the Red Wolf, you're gonna feel better for mm -hmm. it. And you're gonna be more productive you could be able to take on the day more and more present and uh, more energy. So I just went with that. Yeah. That that became kind of my motivation day after day early on. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's really good to know. Thank you for going to detail on that. And what would you tell someone who is kind of like, who does that? I, we all feel that feeling, right? Of like, oh, I could get more sleep. I could do this instead of working out. Like we'll all, our brain will always find a way to avoid a, a task that we know we have to do, but we really don't want to do it, especially if you kind of lose some momentum like that. Sure. Like it's, it's, yeah, fitness is such a momentum game. So what's, what's some advice you would give someone who is like, who has those kind of feelings creep up on them? Yeah. We all, first of all, we all feel that way, no matter how accomplished or how uh, perceived, like we do it well uh, and get things done and that we all feel that way from time to time. So it's okay to feel that way. Mm -hmm. But what you do from there is really up to you. Um, just, just get out and do it. Do something. Get there. The hardest, the hardest part of going to the gym is getting in the car and going to the gym. Yeah. Uh, once you're there, things get better exponentially. Mm -hmm. um, you feel better. The people that are there are are excited to be there for the most part. <laughs> they just, Within reason. Wait, they just had the same drama of getting <laughs> to the gym. Um, but I think that, that that's the hardest part is that 15, 20 minutes ride is that you're trying to talk yourself out of it. And then you're like, okay, well, I'm here. I made it. And now I'm excited. You know, people are excited to see you. They're high-fiving. Where We've got the wad going on. You've got the explanation. You've got the work to do once you start moving. Then it's really that's the that's the easy part. It's just you know is is doing the work, and and that's the exciting part is doing the work. Yeah, yeah, I feel the same way. Like once I get going, it's like well, I'm already here. I'm already going. Just finish it, and then and then once you get momentum, you're like okay, I feel better, and yeah. then I feel even better, and then and then it's like and then now I'm like I'm doing something that I didn't think I could do today, and then yeah. and then that's a huge motivator too from momentum is because you're like I didn't think I could even work out today, and not only did I work out, I actually you know, went faster or heavier than I thought I could. And now I feel fantastic. And yeah. now, now I re then, then you, you know, you get that reward system over and over again of doing that. And then you're like, well, you know, I've done it before, so I can do it again. Yeah. And it is a reward. I mean, cause if you did it, it's particularly feeling that you weren't ready for that, or you, you didn't feel like you could achieve that today. And then you do well and you actually do a heck of a lot better than you thought that it is. That is quite a reward for you showing up. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's days we don't want to get up and necessarily go to work either. You know, it'd be nice to like, oh, wow, I love to be able to take a vacation day. But you go to work and things go really well and you feel accomplished. I think that's the thing you take into every single day is it's like, what, 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 what can I accomplish? What can I do? And how can I get through this day with some really great stuff going on? Right. It's also like, you know, a good a good piece of advice I got from a mentor of mine was like, it doesn't matter how you feel. It matter, the only thing that matters is what you do. Yeah. Like your behavior is the only thing that matters. Like you yeah. can, you, he's like, you can still do this thing and not like it or not want to do it or not feel like doing it and still do it. <laughs> so oh, it's like you, like, you can still do it. You, you don't have to, you don't have to like it. You don't have to feel like doing it, but you can still do it. <laughs> right. 
Oh, for sure. And I think that, you know, when you go in, you can also work toward changing your mindset to those things. Uh, if, if you even think about being more positive toward what you're trying to achieve, it's like, you know, get, making it to the cars, it's like, you know, make, not ma making excuses to get into the car is going to make it a lot more difficult than saying, what, what, how, how many great things are going to happen when I get into that car and get into the gym? Mm -hmm. I'm going to feel great. I'm going to, and all these other things that, oh, that sets like your mindset forward into what can I accomplish? How positive and how wonderful this is going to be to your day mm. uh, versus talking yourself out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Because it is mindset. I mean, you talk about behaviors, you talk about how you feel, but mindset, you can change that mindset instantly by, mm -hmm. by thinking a different way. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. Um, Kind of shifting gears here. Can you, uh, you know, can you share like uh, like a like a one of the most proudest achievements that you've had at the gym specifically? Oof. And there've been so many. I mean, you know, when I came into Red Wolf, there wasn't a lot of CrossFit skills that I had. Like mm -hmm. I, I had a lot of bad habits, um, which is you know is fine. It's, I think we achieve you know we, we accumulate bad habits over time when you don't have a lot of good instruction or coaching. So for me, everything that I achieve, whether it's, you know, my first set of 10 toes to bars, which I, you know, which I got at, at Red Bull, um, which was, was huge. Um, I, I've worked on uh, training for an event, uh, a competition where um, I came in first in every event and Caitlin wrote that program for me. And I was really blown away the fact that she put all of the events into my training mm -hmm. so every every day i had something that i was training toward the event and i you know just slammed it pretty hard when i got there so i was really proud of that i mean it's easy to say one rep max is you know i mean my one rep max uh, back squat last year was 220 i mean it's something i never even got close to or 270 on, a, on deadlift 145 on power i mean so those are those are like things you find in in uh, you know in your in your journal but I think the things that, that I'm most proud of is the, the things that I was able to accomplish with all that working out with being healthy, going in, I love competition. So when going into competition, doing really well and winning them, which is my goal. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think those are the things and representing and holding the sign up at first place, Red Wolf, uh, for me is, you know, to represent the gym is, is really gratifying. No, that's awesome. Uh, no, that's fantastic. I remember when that happened and it, it was really cool because, um, from our standpoint, we always don't know if the program is actually going to work. There's a lot of trial and error. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm being completely transparent. Like, you know, you can never predict it, right? Like, you know, we're all terrible at predicting the future regardless. So, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, we, we always try and dial that into the point where it's like we try and make it unreasonable to the point where, you know, it's unreasonable that you wouldn't be successful. So yeah. how do we do that? So, you know, and how do we how do we plan around that? with especially with time constraints with scheduling and everything so um yeah i'm really proud that we were able to help you accomplish that so i mean you i Thank mean you. you're the one who ended up doing it you followed through <laughs> and you did it so which is awesome well it's you have to trust the process too i mean uh, you know when you get a when you get a, a workout and you get a whole training for the day and then there's, there's things in there that are accessories that just feel rather mundane uh, that aren't quite as as exciting to do as you know the as the the main workout but you know, when, after you're doing them for six, eight weeks, all of a sudden you're you're getting stronger, and and, and then you're you, then your toes to bar is a heck of a lot better, mm -hmm. or you're doing more pull-ups because you're doing a lot more rows uh, and pulling movements. You see how it connects, but at the time it's like, oh, oh okay. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's, not, it's like, it, is this really going to work? It's not really exciting, but okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, fitness in general can be kind of unexciting. I mean, I mean, CrossFit can be more exciting because of the intensity and, yeah. and the variety and the fact that, you know, you can work on, there's so many different things to work on, which makes it fun. Yeah. Um, so what's, uh, I guess, what would be your advice to someone also who just get who just doesn't like fitness in the first place and gets bored really easily doing some of these mundane things. Yeah, and you know, for yes, you know, the great part, you know, when when you may say constantly varied in CrossFit, you know, it is constantly varied. Like it, no two days are alike. And I think that if you're bored easily coming in, I'd say, you know, I don't know how much time you have, and I don't know what, but just go three days a week to CrossFit. It's never going to be like the same workout. It's going to be different. You'll feel like you've hit every body part, and you'll get a lot out of it. And if you're not if you're not into all that working out stuff, um, you're getting a lot out of those three days. And be consistent. Just mm -hmm. go with three days, 
and run with it. Do your, give it your all for those, and you will be surprised what can do what it can do for your fitness and and just your overall, even your body composition. Yeah, no, fantastic. Yeah, that's the whole reason I got into CrossFit in the first place. Was I just I was so bored. I was like, I need something that that you know gets me excited to work out. You know, that's fun and that will make me actually want to do this every day. Because you know, I started with like kind of a traditional bodybuilding style, and then mm-hmm. you I got great great progress and it yeah. was fun for a while. But then I was like, am I really like gonna do this for <laughs> like for the rest of my life? I got to figure something else out. And then that's when I stumbled upon CrossFit.com. So yeah. Um, what was over your entire fitness journey? What is the biggest obstacle that you had to overcome, and how did you do it? For me, it's always been um, finding the time. I shouldn't say finding time. It's making the time. You know, making the time work. It's always been a huge obstacle. Just because whether I've been at a company that requires certain, you know, traveling, then that travel expanded, and then travel changed. I, it was always trying to fit that into a, a, a hotel workout twice a week. Uh, the second thing I think being is that um, I've always had. Well, I've had my knee replaced. I've had shoulder surgery now. Um, I've had, you know, just, I tweaked my shoulder a couple of years ago. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, actually, that one was CrossFit. That, I, <laughs> that was an overhead squat. <laughs> the jam did. But for the most part, I've never injured it during CrossFit. But mm-hmm. I think those are some of the obstacles that you're going to tweak something. And uh, how do you work around that? And how do you continue to move forward with it? And uh, that being said is that, you know, you just, you just keep doing it. You just don't do that one thing that, that agitates it. And, 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 you know, I've, I've, I, I worked with, uh, somebody who was in our gym who did some, uh, physical therapy work and I got her programming and that really helped my hip at one point. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was able to, to squat better. Um, but I think that, you know, just, it, you have a body and it's never going to be perfect. You know, I'm not 20. I'm not even close to it. So mm-hmm. I'm not going to heal in the, in the blink of an eye. So I, I think just being very cautious of not ego lifting, eating right, getting enough rest and doing all the right things to be able to allow me to enjoy working out over the years. Um, like I said, I had done short course triathlon and I didn't know how to swim, really. I mean, I was a terrible swimmer. I think my first triathlon, I did the backstroke. And hey, at least you did it. <laughs> right. <laughs> But I was like, this is this sounds really exciting and really different. And my personal trainer at the time um, was a triathlon coach, and he was actually um, an Olympic triathlon in his age group. And uh, he got me into it, and it was a lot of fun, and it was really intense, and it was very uh, it was very mind challenging, which I love. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it makes you know gives you a stronger outlook and things. I think that that translated into doing. CrossFit in that it's very challenging mentally, but just in a shorter time frame, right? I don't have to do, I don't have to do two hours worth of swimming or two hours worth of running, or I should say two hours worth of biking and doing, you know, that, that was, that really took a lot of time. And yeah, I got, yeah, it does take time. <laughs> but I got, you know, so much more out of the amount of hour to hour and 15 minutes of CrossFit than I could ever have done out of triathlon. Yeah, no, I, that, that's the one thing. I'm glad you brought that up too, because I think um, it's easy for me to forget, especially um, just because I've done it for so long, is that CrossFit saves me so much time. And also like the endorphins I get from it, oh, it's yeah. hard for me to do anything other than that. Because believe me, there are times where I go through phases where I take a break from doing, not necessarily take a full-on break, but I'll only do like two or three CrossFit workouts a week and I'll just kind of do traditional stuff, like mm-hmm. just lifting or, or cardio work. But then it'll take me even longer to do it. And I still don't get like that endorphin rush out of it. So I don't really feel, I mean, I feel better, but not yeah. that much better. Yeah. When I do a full on CrossFit workout, just for some reason, I don't know what it is. Like either it's the endorphins I get after, or it's just the fact that, um, uh, that, uh, my brain actually literally turns off during a workout. And all I care about is the next rep or the next distance. Like I don't think about anything else. So it gets very meditative for me Sure. that, uh, that, yeah, I just get so much more out of it, both mentally and physically. Sure, sure. So, I mean, how, how do you how do you feel about that? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, I, I get, I've been able to get that out of a lot of workouts, whether it's, you know, as triathlon training, you spend a lot of time by yourself. And so you can clear out your, you can clear out your mental slate. Um, but because CrossFit is so intense, like you just can't have a mind wander. Um, I, you have to stay focused on that present moment of whether that rep whether your form, um, whether it's, uh, you know, how many calories you're putting out and then going into the next step. 
I think that you have to be very much more present, mm -hmm. very, very present within your body to get through, not only without injury, but to do it right yes. and get the most out of it. Awesome. Fantastic, Sharon. Uh, last question for you before yeah. we wrap things up. So um, let's say someone's on the fence about either joining Red Wolf specifically or starting their CrossFit journey or starting even just, you know, dabbling into the functional fitness world. What's some advice you would give them? I, I would say just, you know, go to a class, be open-minded and <clears throat> particularly with Red Wolf, say, you know, you're, you're, in, you're in the hands of people who are vested in your uh, in your journey and your outcome as much as you are. Um, they will make sure that you do the movements correctly because it can be very intimidating. When I talk about CrossFit to anybody who will listen to it, because that's what we do, mm -hmm. <laughs> is that uh, they're intimidated by it. It's a lot of moves. And the only reference point they have is the CrossFit games, which, you know, it, you look at that and nobody would think, I can't do that. Yes. Um, but that's not what really, cr everyday CrossFit in, um, in, in any CrossFit gym is just average people working really hard. Yep. And um, go in, try it out, stay with it, give yourself a month. Just go, you know, saying, if, you, if three days a week, give that a shot, make it your best three days. Um, and you will learn so much. You'll learn so much about how to train. You'll learn so much, but you'll do it in a very compact amount of time. So if you'll, you'll get a lot out of that hour. You'll be able to take on the rest of your day um, and just do it. I, I would say just do it because standing back and watching it isn't going to make you any better. Yeah. And it's not going to make you any fitter. And, uh, and it's not going to make you feel better about yourself. Yeah. Um, if you really want change and you want to be fit, uh, try CrossFit. And if you really want great coaching and great programming, go to Red Wolf. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate the review. Yeah, you, you just, uh, <laughs> I'll pass the 20 a little bit later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Sharon, for coming on the podcast today. Thanks so much was, for having me. It was me. great having you. Thank you for appreciate sharing your story. It. That was awesome. Thank you so much for listening. If this was helpful, please leave us a review so that way we know to make more content just like this. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Red Wolf CrossFit and feel free to DM your content suggestions there. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time. Good luck, have fun, nailed it.